Well, we're getting close to finishing this down here. That's what I want to do in this video, okay? So I'm going to take this head off here. Take that apart. So what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, do this choker here. So the choker, uh, let's see here. See the choker here? It's made up of uh, shells. Bring to just made into a circle and then tied together by other shells. So to do that, let's just mark out our center line here. And then just we'll space it over and mark out another center line. Keep them about as even as you can. There we go. Start that way. Just make it a mark. Take you out a chip. Come back up front here, and we will just make a little It just takes a while. Everything takes a while. And you want to take your time doing these things. This one is hidden over here underneath that. Just makes it a little 
difficult. Turn this around so Judy can see it better. This looks kind of ragged, but when we uh, use the burning pan, we'll clean out these grooves. So you can see how I'm doing it here. Also, you want to make sure you get rid of that inner edge too. Looks kind of ragged, doesn't it? Kind of shaky today. If you're wondering why the videos were s slowing down there for a bit in the last couple of days. Because I'm Having a bout with a kidney stone, which is no fun, so I hope you'll sympathize with me. So, okay. Here's another way to do it. Just carve out these, the ends. Here I'm going to get rid of these heavy pin 
across the line, so you're not to big interfere with anything. But Okay, these all show up once uh, we do our burning. So what's next? I guess next is the texturing of the robe up the top of the robe here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do after I kind of indicate this a little bit more. Okay. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to texture our robe. Now, if you look at this from here, see how I come up like this, and I follow the lines of these uh, indentations we made, like on here. So I've got a pencil line comes up here. I want these things to all come up like this. Just follow around like that. All right, that's what we're going to do with a stoning tool. Over there with my grinders. Make these a little bit more visible. Okay, so we'll head on. Okay, over. I'm over here with my motorized section. I do use these motorized tools occasionally, not very much, but you know, there comes a time when I use them to do certain things, and texturizing this area up in here is one of those. Now I'm going to use a Dremel, and it has a little, uh, little bit on the end. This thing is ground down. Let me see if I can see one up here that hasn't gone been ground down so far. That's basically one there. See it's got a just a thin sort of a sharp edge on it. And then this one's worn down to it, it does a good job this little one even though it might be worn down so much. I use other things like here's one that uh, has a cut saw you know cut saw bit in it and then here's some other larger cut saw bits. I use them if I want to remove a large area of wood real fast. One thing I want, want you to notice is when you're using these things put a leather glove on your hand because if you slip you know and you happen to hit your finger with one of these things especially boy you could get a bad injury if you didn't have any kind of thing protecting your finger. A leather glove will help. It'll, if you hit your finger hard enough, you know, it might go through, this bit might go through it, but boy, having something on there instead of nothing at all is really important. So, you know, just get you a leather glove to hold it, hold this piece. You're not going to get hit so much with this piece here with this hand, but boy, with this hand, you, you run a risk. Wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Even with the little Dremel, which is I'm using here. Okay, so anyway, I drew my lines on there. 
going to get noisy. I'm not going to. I'm just going to show you a little bit of this because it's just too too noisy to sit here and listen to the whole thing. So we'll start up here. I just come across here like this. Grind this down to the close to the robe or the the other part of the costume. Don't go down so low that you try to get in there, or you're going to mess up your carving here. Just stop when you get down about as far as I am right there, and I'll show you how to fix that later. Okay. Same goes for tight areas. You might accidentally bounce over it where you put a gouge into your shirt, this shirt. Another thing, hang on a When you're grinding, you'll notice that some areas, like I ground up here, see, it doesn't make such so much fuzz. But when I ground down here, it made a lot of fuzz because of the direction of the grain. So sometimes you might want to turn this around like this. Still making, still making a little fuzz. But don't worry about the fuzz. I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. But see this little area in here? You don't want areas looking like that. So just go over and the way you get rid of that continual thing. It doesn't take long. You just have to keep at it. Don't, don't get overboard with your tool. So I'm going to stop... Or rather, Judy's going to stop filming here because she, <laughs> she don't like the dust, okay? So we'll be back when I'm done. Well, Judy came over and reminded me of the one way, not necessarily a nice way, to put my mask back on. So we had to, I took the hint and put it on. So make sure you wear your mask <laughs> so you don't have to breathe any of this dust, okay? All right, we've got this all textured. Now what we want to do is we want to tie this in up here that we did use our stoning tool on. We want to tie it into the, what's down below. And to do that, I'm going to use my uh, burner over here. 
I use a little detailer I bought off a fellow we used to have in our wood carving group who passed on. It's a pretty good unit. So down here where you can see where I stopped, Let me go along here and burn a pretty sharp line. Just burn some lines to tie into the ones above that we've textured. Just like that, doesn't take much at all. And the blow away is smoke. Anyway, just continue going on. Where you've got these deep cuts, kind of burn a real deep line in there and just bleed it out up there. doing this and Judy can turn that off. Okay, while we're up in this area, I will just go ahead and separate the rope from the shirt in pretty dark line there. Then start dark up there, follow down your cut, and just bleed it out. Like that. Sometimes you'll make a little mistake like right here. Just cut that out. Cut that out. This step just sort of takes a while, so don't rush it. 
you're getting down into the stuff that's really going to make your carving look snappy. So you don't want to you don't want to go too fast and goof it up. Especially not now that you've spent so much time on it. These little interior things, I just do highlight them just like that. areas up here. Now on the beaded strip here, kind of lay your burning tool over to where it burns the entire edge of the beaded strip, if you can. See how I did it here? Up here, that's what you want up here, not so much down here. So let me go over that again. Like that. What that does, that'll set set off your beading strip really nice but it'll also save you from having to paint that edge saving you a step Okay, I'm going to put a center line right down the middle here. <coughs> Just like that. Now for your fringe, start up dark, pull it down, and let it get light like that. Dark, pull it down, bleed it out dark, pull it down, bleed it out. And just do the ones you did with the uh, 
with your knife, not the ones you did with the little curved gouge. Now down here on the bottom, just do the opposite. Bring it up, bleed it out. Bring it up, bleed it out. They don't need to touch. <laughs> Judy's about to choke up over here. Almost done. Okay, the only thing left now is the beaded strip. So I'm going to take a break here, let Judy get a, her mask on, and then I won't hear her struggling back there. Okay, Okay. remember your little strip we cut out for our beaded strip here to make sure it was all nice and even? Okay, I've made some marks on it there, little pencil marks. You can see them. One there, one there. I do forget one. Nope, I didn't forget one. With a compass. This is the way I do it. Measure across till you hit your line. And then just gently follow along. Like that. Okay, what I'm doing here is I burnt me three heavy lines on my beaded strip, dividing it up into four, four sections. Now what I'm doing is I'm going between each section and I'm very lightly burning little lines across like this. I'm trying to duplicate a beading structure on this piece. Indians, when they make their... Now, oh, come on here. strips or beading for their shirts. Use what is called a lazy stitch. I'll explain that here in a minute. I hope I'm right, but if I'm wrong I'll be corrected. say these are beads. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you run your thread through all six of them. And you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you run your thread through there, sew it to the material. Here's the material. And you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you run your thread through there. See, that's what they do. And they tie these threads tie it down to the material underneath. Is that understandable? Just look it up on the internet and you'll be able to <laughs> figure it out probably a lot better than what I'm telling you, but that's basically it. I simplify it on this thing a lot just to give the overall appearance that they did the same thing on my little shirt. I don't know how many beads would be in my string. It's, it can't be too many or the beads will flop around. So maybe it might be just three or four or something like that. Of course, the beads are quite small. But anyway, just take your turn. turn. Take your time. Try to get the lines as even evenly part as you can, but if it's not going to make that much difference if you don't. 
just take your time. The more time you take, the better it's going to look in the end. blowing today. These strips back in time when they made made them were probably the beading strips were probably sewn beads were sewn down onto a piece of uh, leather and then applied to the shirt. There. So you can see the texture it's kind of light on this side. it up a little bit. Oh, that looks good. Now on your uh, strip here, do the same thing. What we're doing here is we're not being so uh, detailed that we're trying to show it exactly as it is. We're just giving the surface a texture that this is different than this and it'll be different than that there. Understand? We don't get, if we wanted to texture this super detailed. I think that's just a little too much for a caricature figure. So anyway, look at here, almost done. One more thing here we'll do. What I like to do is back here on the back. Well, what I'm going to do on the back is I'm going to take where is it? probably this tool here. Maybe not that tool. Maybe this tool. After I sharpen it up a little. Maybe not that tool. Maybe this tool. After I sharpen it up a little. And I'm going to make gouge marks that go all the way down. Instead of having this pebbled surface here. It just doesn't look too good. So I'm going to sharpen this up so I don't get those burrs showing up. But right now I'm going to show you how to get rid of your fuzz, okay? Okay, over here on the workbench, I got me a butane torch here, okay? Open her up. And I got me a glove on my hand. I'm going to take this torch. See all those little sparks? That's that fuzz burning, burning off of there. Don't get too ambitious up here. You don't want to catch the thing on fire and burn away all your details. right there. And then, if I can find it, 
with a little wire brush you can buy these down at the Lowe's I think they're just welding brushes guys use them just give it a good scrubbing that's good and don't worry about this being dark that's fine because you're going to make it dark when you paint it but you'll have to go back <laughs> go back and fix things like that I just need to take my burning pen and redo those little areas I can leave it dark because again I'm going to paint this so I'm not concerned about that I might try to clean that little area up right here where the uh, raw 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 leather is so it remains uh, the same as this here so there's only one more step left and we'll be done with this part the carving part so like I said I'm going to come back here once I get my duo sharp and then I'm going to uh, use a pencil I'm going to just go along my edge here clean it up all the way around here down underneath here along here and burn a line outline I'll show you like I did here see how I did it here that just sort of cleans up the back and then the last step will be to sign the name but you can see here where I've uh, come in and I've made all these chips go down to where they look nice and clean okay so I will do that and that will take care of this and then the last uh, last step I'll just do that right now make sure I got everything here The last step is take this over to my flap sander and uh, clean it up, get it nice and clean. I don't wash my carvings. The last thing I want to do is take it in there and scrub it with soap and water. No, I'm not going to do that. It'll eventually get wet, wetted down prior to me painting it, but that's the only time. Okay? I don't want to put anything on this that I might not be able to wash completely off. So just this flap sander will do with that job. Okay, my flap sander here. What this is, I've explained this before. It's just a sanding wheel, which have brushes, soft brushes back here, and split uh, emery paper on the outside, and it will just slap this piece real gently to remove the dirt and any uh, very 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 small imperfections okay so I'm going to turn it on yeah it cleans everything up and in doing that it's knocking off the real sharp edge of your car where the edge hits. See, you can see right here. See how the little, not too close to you. See how the little uh, highlight there is along the edge? That, that's what makes it look nice. See, it's all cleaned up. That's all you need to do. Your edges are 
nice and smooth, but none of the detail has been sanded off. And that's very important, at least it is to me. I, don't, I do not like uh, carvings that someone just goes to, help, goes, goes to town on them, sanding everything down, getting rid of all the carving marks. Because when you're doing uh, small uh, caricature, caricature carvings, you should want these chips to show. That's what that shows that you carved this thing. But like I say, I'm going to redo this back here. Then I'm going to sign my name across here, and then it's ready for the paint table. Okay. And uh, I think also what we'll do, real quickly, is go ahead and do the burning lines on the face, so you can see how I do that. Okay. okay I've decided not to show the burning lines on the face yet. We will do that in the next video when we attach the braids to the head because that'll, there'll be some burning after that that's required so we'll just put everything back together. So anyway, that's going to end, that's going to end this video and he's starting, starting to look good now. The details are starting to show up and uh, it'll just get better and better and better as we go along. So until the next video, I'll talk to you later.